Hi, my name is Kaylin Helmick, and with me presenting is Wesley McMurtry, and today we are excited to share with you some of our favorite quick tips related to using the Feature Manager design tree more efficiently. So the first tip I would like to share with you today is about renaming items in our feature tree. And to do this, we simply do a slow double click on the feature we'd like to rename, and then we can name it whatever we want, and then we click the enter key on our keyboard to save the new name. If the slow double click just isn't for you, you can also right click on the feature and then go down to rename tree item. And a third way, if you like keyboard shortcuts, is to select the feature and then hit the F2 key on your keyboard. Renaming features on your tree is a helpful way of staying organized because now you can quickly reference your features and know exactly what it is that feature was created for. The next tip I would like to share with you is a feature that is new to SOLIDWORKS 2021 and it allows you to view your features in a different language. And so for example, if you keep the default feature name, it will translate that to another language. To turn this on, we go to options. And then I'm gonna go ahead and search my options for translate. And this is what we're looking for here. And you wanna make sure that this box is selected here, show translated feature names in feature manager tree. And you can select a variety of languages. Right now I have it set to Spanish, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to Chinese and click okay. And now you can see that my translation in my parentheses have switched to Chinese. The next tip I would like to share with you is called selection sets. And to create a selection set, we start by holding down control and selecting the features we would like to be part of our selection set. And then we right click and we go down to save selection and then click new selection set. And then we can see that created a folder for us up here. And if I click this arrow, we can see our selection set that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and do that slow double click again to rename our selection set, and I'm gonna rename it holes. And if we click the drop down arrow, I can see that I added some holes. And this is a great way of saving similar features so that you can easily access it later on. So for example, once my feature tree is full and I'm looking for a certain hole, instead of trying to dig through my feature tree, I can go to my selection set and view all my holes here. The next tip I would like to share with you is about the rollback bar. And the rollback bar can be used to kind of go back in time, so to speak. And we do this by clicking and dragging our rollback bar up in our feature tree. And this is useful if you're ever thinking, oh, I wish I created this feature earlier. I need to go back in time before I create this feature. And you can do that by rolling the rollback bar up as far as you need to. And that suppresses these features. And so if I create a feature now, this is where it would appear on the feature tree. I'm gonna go ahead and roll my rollback bar back down. And the next tip I would like to share with you is one that's called parent-child relationships. And to view parent-child relationships, you simply click on a feature and any arrows that are pointing up in blue are ones that are showing a parent relationship. So for example, this main body feature is a parent of this hole, which means that this hole is referencing this main body. In other words, this hole could not exist if this main body didn't exist. Likewise, if we click on main body, we can see that there's a purple line or a child relationship going to this hole. And it also has parent relationships to the origin and to the right plane. This is helpful if there's ever a feature you're thinking about deleting. You want to make sure that that feature does not have any child relationships. So for example, there wouldn't be a problem if we deleted this feature. However, because many children depend on this main body, it would be a bad idea to delete this main body. This also lets us know how we can rearrange our feature tree items. And you can rearrange a feature tree item by clicking and dragging it to another spot on the feature tree. However, if I try to move that feature above one of its parents, it will say cannot reorder. Change would put child feature above its parent feature. To turn on these parent-child relationship arrows, we click on the first item on our feature tree. And we go to this top section here and we wanna make sure that both of these options are depressed. Both dynamic reference visualization parent as well as dynamic reference visualization child. 
Another way of seeing parent-child relationships is by right-clicking on a feature and then clicking parent-child, and it'll show all of that feature's parents as well as that feature's children. Let's go ahead and close out of this. The next tip I would like to share with you is about feature properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and right-click on a feature and then go to feature properties. And here we can see various information about the feature, including the name, which is another place that we can change the name of the feature, as well as add a description. So I might say, please do not delete. We can also suppress or unsuppress the feature here. And we can also see who created that feature as well as the date they created it and when it was last modified. And so that helps us to keep track of changes in our design. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Another tip I'd like to share with you is about copying and pasting features. So for example, I have this sketch here. And to copy it, I can simply select it and then press Control C on my keyboard. And then I click elsewhere and I press Control V and that will create a copy of my sketch. This is helpful if there's you know, certain sketches you wanna repeat. If you ever feel like your feature tree is getting crowded with items that you might not be using, so for example, I'm not, really not using either of these sketches in my design, we can always purge the unused features, and we do this by clicking this top item on our feature tree, and then going down to purge unused features. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And SOLIDWORKS shows us all our features that are suppressed, as well as our sketches that are unused. So I'm gonna go ahead and check all of these because I wanna get rid of both of these sketches, and then I'll click OK. And then SOLIDWORKS confirms that we do wanna delete this, and I'm gonna go ahead and say yes to all. And then we can see that those sketches are no longer a part of our feature tree. So that's a great way of getting rid of extra information that you are not using. The next item I wanna show you is the design binder. And so the design binder actually allows us to save files into our part. So for example, here I have a design journal which is included in all parts and assemblies you create. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we can see our design journal comes up. And in our design journal, we can go ahead and type in various information about our part. So for example, I might want to create a design log and I might say in my design log, part ready for review. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save it and exit out of it. And then we can see if I double click on this again, we can see that that information is still in my document. You can also add your own files to the design binder. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on design binder and then click add an attachment. So for example, if I had a meeting with my boss and my boss gave me certain specifications that I need to follow, I can upload the notes that I made during that meeting about my boss's specifications for my part. And then I can easily reference it here. And this is information that I might have normally written on a sticky note and put somewhere in my cubicle only to be lost when I actually needed the information. And so instead it's right here in my part, easy to reference. And my boss told me that the part must not weigh more than 0.2 pounds. Part needs to be completed by October 10th. And I should send to Monica for review. So on the topic of the part must not weigh more than 0.2 pounds, there's actually a feature in SOLIDWORKS that helps with this. And we call them sensors. And if the sensor folder isn't showing up for you, you can always go to options and then search for feature manager and we'll go to our system options and you can make sure that your sensors folder is set to show. So you can have it as always show, hide, automatic, and this applies to all the other folders in the feature tree as well. So if you did not have the design binder showing either, you can change it here as well. So to use the sensors, we go ahead and right click on the folder and I'm gonna click add sensor. And I do want my sensor to measure my mass properties, although there's a variety of different things that you can have your sensor measure. So I'll stick to mass properties. And under properties, I'll do mass, although you can also do volume and surface area and more. And next I'll select the entities I want to monitor. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this part. And I'm going to create an alert. And this alert will let me know if the mass is greater than 0.2 pounds. And then I'll go ahead and click check. 
And now if the mass on my part exceeds 0.2 pounds, it'll let me know. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the material to steel so that we do activate that alarm. I'll go ahead and click apply. And now we can see that there's an error here in our sensors. And then if I highlight this, it says warning, 0.395 pounds is greater than 0.2. So I know that I exceeded my boss's requirements on this part and I would need to modify the part or the material to get back within that 0.2 pound limit. The final quick tip I want to share with you is about annotations. And I know that Wes will go into annotations a little bit more, but I want to quickly show that if you right click on the annotations folder, you can select show feature dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then SolidWorks will show you all the dimensions related to the part. And this is a handy way of getting dimensions for your part instead of having to take out the measure tool and measure all these dimensions yourself. So those are my favorite quick tips to use with the feature manager design tree. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Wes now. And Wes will talk a little bit more about feature manager design tree tips related to assemblies. It's all yours, Wes. Thanks, Kaylin. My name is Wes McMurtry, and I am a applications engineer with Go Engineer. I would like to spend some time today covering a few topics that can be found in the feature manager. The feature manager allows for an outline view of the active assembly we see in the display area. It is a very intuitive and easy method of working in SOLIDWORKS. Today I'm going to focus on a few items slash tips, tricks, methods that may be overlooked from time to time that can be found using the feature manager. The first item I would like to discuss is using the filter in the feature manager to search for features that are a part of the assembly seen in the display area and use those selected features to create a favorites folder to store the selected features for easy access. So let's get started. So let's go look at the filter for searching for specific items. This can be found at the uppermost uh, portion of the feature manager. Uh, for this scenario, I want to select a counterbore feature to search for and then place them in a favorites folder for easy access for things uh, such as editing or sharing with other design members. So what I'm doing right now is I've went and searched for anything with the letter C-B-O-R-E and now this has populated my design tree. Now I can see all of the different counterbore features that are being used in my assembly. So what I'm going to do next is start selecting each individual counterbore that the filter has searched and found Then once that's completed, I'll go back. You can see over here on my assembly, all the different counter boards are now highlighted. And what I'm gonna do next is right click and click on add to favorites. So you can see now, once I go ahead and go back into my feature manager, and I, I now have a favorites folder with all the different counter board features all in one location. This saves me time and effort from going and looking through the feature tree or selecting and isolating or uh, individually selecting components and opening them and looking for counter boards. So you can see now I'm, I have the ability to go ahead and edit my, uh, my counter board if needed. If I had chosen to do so, I'm not going to do anything today, but that's, that's, uh, that's the idea behind the, using the filter. So you can um, find things quickly, search for them, select them, and then save them as a favorite. So up next, we're going to use the collapse function to minimize the length of the feature design tree. You can right click anywhere in the feature manager to select. But first, let's scroll down just to kind of emphasize the length of our, uh, our tree here. We'll right click again and click on collapse items. And now you notice everything's kind of tidied up there and uh, everything is collapsed and uh, can be uh, easily, much more easily accessed. Or accessed. Sorry about that. Uh, we can also create a, a new folder or add a new folder if we want to store multiple bodies and parts into a singular folder. This is useful for hardware, nuts and bolts, and miscellaneous items. Uh, so it's basically a storage place for uh, putting um, things. So let's choose 
a couple of pieces of hardware here, just kind of looking around to see what we've got. Um, some mounting hardware, some other items there. So to do that, what we do, once we select what we're looking for, we're going to left click and drag and drop that on top of the, the folder, the hardware folder, just like you see there. Do that again, repeat, left click, drag, and we'll choose, oh, that looks good, we've got, we've got enough there. Just that's, that's an example of creating a new folder and dragging and dropping components into the folder. So up next, uh, we're going to create a comment in the feature manager. Uh, there's several things you can do with comments. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and look at adding the comment. Notice we have a comment dialog pops up here. This is allows us to add any type of notes uh, for, for future use or other team members, people working behind you. Uh, to come back and take a look at maybe a concern that you had. Uh, you can also insert images, add a date, time date, uh, date stamp, and also insert a screenshot. So our assembly. Let's go ahead and uh, save and close that. But maybe we want to make an edit later on. So if I come back and right click on the comment, I can go back, maybe zoom in. On something that I'm concerned about, take a closer look at it. Now let's go back and right click, edit comment, maybe take a snapshot of that, and we'll save and close that. Now I'm going to switch over to a smaller assembly, so let's take a look at that. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you is grouping components. Uh, relatively simple item on the list here under the tree display. So go there, left click, and go over and slide all the way to the bottom. We'll find a thing called group component instances. This uh, particular assembly didn't have a ton of hardware or things that could be grouped together, but nonetheless, it did save us a little space in our feature tree. Uh, the next uh, thing that I'd like to talk a little bit about as well is uh, ability to uh, configure components. Components that have multiple configurations can be can be altered or, or modified from the feature manager. If I zoom in here, you notice we have uh, some uh, nuts and some uh, flat washers that seem to be a little different sizes. So let's take a look at that real quick. And if I were to go and uh, let's find what we're going to change here. If I right or just even uh, select and then come over and you notice at the very top there, if I click on the drop down arrow, change my configuration and click on the OK button, you notice now I've got my configuration changed. That looks a little more like the other nuts and bolts. Uh, same goes for this washer here. Let's go ahead and modify that and make a change. We'll say OK to that as well. Uh, so all of that's being done within the feature manager. So if you ever uh, ever see something that needs to be configured, that can also be done uh, from the flyout feature manager as well. Uh, of course, with SolidWorks, there's always seems to be three to four different ways to get a solution from something. So the next step, let's talk a little bit about active, active, active configurations. If you have an active configuration that has a, an exploded view in it, you can uh, right click in the feature tree and select Animate Explode or Explode. I selected Animate Explode this time. So uh, no need to necessarily go over into the configuration manager as long as the Explode configuration is active. Uh, so let's go back now and we'll right click again. And we'll come down and we'll animate the collapse. We have the option for collapse or animate. Kind of pops there just a little bit. And then we're going back now putting it all back together. So that was using the explode command from the feature manager. Uh, another option too is under our mates folder, if I click on the drop down arrow. Uh, you notice there's just a whole list of, of mates. There's several several mates here and you notice it's just a uh, we've got a active 
active mates, suppressed mates. We have, I think we have some missing suppressed mates. Uh, so we have an option to sort mates. And to do that, I want to right click on the mates folder. I want to come down and you look at all the different options we have here. I'm going to select group mates by status. And what that does is uh, exactly like it sounds. It's, it's grouped these in a status. So I have active, I have uh, suppressed and suppressed missing all in their separate folders. And if there's other things that can be, they can be sorted by, uh, it will also sort them as well as far as uh, missing mates or any errors or uh, anything like that. So that's a, uh, that's a handy tool, sort mate. Next up, uh, let's look at uh, our purge unused features. This can also be handy as well for cleaning up uh, models and assemblies. Uh, let's go ahead and select that. And we do have a few uh, items that, that can be deleted or purged. Uh, we'll go ahead and say OK to that. And we'll Kind of take a quick note here, what they're telling us. We'll say yes. And we'll go ahead. And now we'll go back and let's take a quick look. At opening up a new subassembly. Let's go ahead and open up subassembly there. And let's take a look at the different things that we can do here. Uh, so we have several, we have a few things here that are suppressed in this uh, assembly or this subassembly. Uh, so we could uh, unsuppress those as a uh, all all in one swipe there. So I've opened up uh, all the different folders that have potential things that are suppressed. We have several mates that are suppressed and uh, parts. So I'm going to left click, shift, and then click again to do a entirety of all of those suppressed uh, features there and then I will come up and tell it I want those to be unsuppressed. So now you notice we have uh, all our components now at least in this assembly are unsuppressed and can be worked with if needed. Let me stretch this out just a little bit just to kind of give you an idea of how much information is in this feature tree. Maybe I don't want to show everything. There's still a lot of information in there, but um, of course, uh, these are all optional op or options for you to select and choose to your, your preference. Let's take a look at what happens if I delete a mate. I right clicked on my mate. You notice right in this area is where I want you to look where I'm circling around with my mouse. I'm going to tell it to delete that. I'll we'll say yes. And you notice that changes. Now I have a, some, a bracket there with a little minus symbol in it. That's telling me that this particular part is no longer fully defined. I am now not completely defined. And that's so I've control Z. I'm going to undo that. You notice it goes back to uh, no minus symbol there. So that's the difference between fully, fully defined and not defined. And also, if you ever see an F in brackets, that's the, that's the uh, fixed part. That means that cannot be moved. It is uh, fixed in space. And the float command, if I choose all configurations, I can go back now. Unless uh, it's, it is still fully a fully defined part, so I'm still unable to move it in space. Uh, but uh, that is the difference. If you see the F in brackets, that is a command or an icon indicating a fully or fixed component. Well, that's what I have time to show you today. So thank you for listening in, and I hope you enjoyed my take on the Feature Manager and a few of the things that make it such a useful tool. Please check out any and all upcoming webinars from Go Engineer. We would very much appreciate that. We're continually updating content for our customers, so be sure to check out our YouTube channel for all kinds of information. And don't forget to go to GoEngineer.com if you would like to learn more about our services and support. That includes online, on-site, and self-paced training. See you next time.